This is the Learn to Trade online show, where experts talk about their trading journeys and help traders make more money unlocking the world of online Forex, crypto and industry traders. We tell it like you want to hear it. Unfiltered insights, no corners cut. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Learn to Trade online show today for today, <laughs> sorry, for today, the 26th of February, 2024. My name's Paul Botterill, and I'm your host. I'm also the founder of Actions to Wealth and Online Trading Profits. Hi, guys. Welcome. I'm Simon Williams, currently in London, trading crypto and investing in crypto. Hi, guys. Welcome aboard. Uh, my name is Ash Bull, and I am a professional investor and trader. Adam, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> same as last time. Exact same thing as last time. Hi, everyone. I'm Adam Harris. I'm a chief market analyst in the UK and also a full-time trader, and I love what I do. Cheers, guys. Uh, thanks for that. And look, um, I'm going to take us through a little bit about the competition. Now, there's two ways you can make lots of money from this show. The first one is you can come into the Zoom. Uh, you can put your name in the chat when we ask you to. We'll put you on the wheel of names, and if you're drawn out, you can place a trade or you can steal one of our trades. If you place a trade and it wins, it beats our trades for that week, you win $750. This week's jackpot. And if you steal one of our trades, you win half of the jackpot. The other thing you can do to make some money is simply follow our trades. I think a great trading learning experience if you watch this, you know. So far this month, markets have been there. We've been battling away down a couple of percent. Adam pulls out the big DAX one of this uh, this week. I'm going to close that trade in a few minutes. Uh, what's that, 13%, 14%, all of a sudden we're up 11% for the quarter. Nothing wrong with that. You can always follow our trades and make some money. Um, anything about the market this week, guys? What are your thoughts? Uh, I Well, do you know what? I, I wonder whether we sort of, we, we've hit that hump where nobody really knows what the central banks are going to do and everybody seems to be relatively stable where they're staying. There was big news about the RBNZ a few weeks ago from uh, ANZ Bank suggesting that they were going to raise interest rates. I'm not so sure. You know, when, when I look at the data, they're not really kind of doing much better than anyone else. And I don't think inflation's a huge problem in, in uh, New Zealand, more so than anywhere else. So I, I'm not so sure they're going to raise the interest rates. I think we could see a, a sell off in the New Zealand dollar after the interest rate holds, which I, which I, I would uh, assume is going to happen. Um, the euro is the blight. You know, the euro actually has got a pretty, pretty, pretty poor looking economy, but uh, but they can't really do a lot either. So I just think we're on this hump where we've got to make some decisions. Who's going to move next? Who's going to move first? Who's going to lower first? Is anybody going to stay for a little while longer? Anybody going to actually raise? It's, it's, there's all, it, all these possibilities are kind of in play right now. So it's making the market much more intraday, in my opinion. Are Aussie numbers this week? Um, is, is it this week? Uh, RBNZ uh, this week for, for the interest rate, you mean? Yeah. I yeah. last week, I think, Simon, RBNZ on Wednesday. By the way, I'm with you, Ash. I think what RBNZ will, in fact, do is leave the interest rate alone and talk a tough game. They'll yeah. be saying that April is coming unless this, you know, if the numbers keep being bad. And they'll see if they can use that to see if they can just curve a little bit of stuff they don't want in the in the market. I think they'll first try and not move and talk it up. If that doesn't work and, and numbers continue just to push up a little bit, maybe April will see a rise, but I'm with you. I think it's talk at this stage. And it's interesting for guys in the New Zealand dollar, it might well be a perfect example of um, buy the news, buy, buy the rumour, sell the news. Agreed. I don't think it's quite going to happen, but uh, that statement might also push that back up again. Look, let's get into the uh, – anyone else? Let's, let's get into this and have a look at some trades. We've got um, – if you um, – if you're not in the Zoom, jump in the Zoom. The way to make money on this show, easy money, is be in the Zoom. Honestly, if I said to you, look, for 750 bucks, you've got to get into a Zoom. I think most people would do that. I mean, I would do that, 750 bucks. So if you want a chance to make some money in this show, jump in the Zoom for a chance to win 750 bucks. That's all you've got to do. You can steal our trade for half of it. You can take the trade for all of it. Jump in the Zoom. The number's slowly going up in the Zoom already. In a few minutes, we'll give you a chance to register. First, we're going to take um, Ash and Simon's trade. Then we'll start giving people a chance to register. So you've got time to jump in the Zoom. You've got a couple of minutes to be in there now. Over to you, Ash. Yeah, this week I'm going to go for the uh, Aussie uh, dollar short. Um, as I said, when it comes down to data, it's a little bit clouded on, on you know, when I'm sort of uh, dragging through some of the numbers, of, you know, one, one country versus another. 
But the United States is, is pretty stable. And I'm looking at the Aussie and thinking, well, actually, seasonally, it's quite weak. So, you know, we, we've got something in our favor here. Then I'll pr bring up the chart and look at the technicals here on the daily. This level that we're at is really interesting. You know, it's, it, it goes quite a way back as well. You know, we, we got uh, it's in and around sort of like where we are. You can see it's in and around this kind of zone. And I think this is a sell zone. When we kind of look at um, where we are most recently, it's try to push, failed. It tried to push, it failed. It's try to push, it's failed. Get this inside bar on Friday. I think an actual sell point under here is a decent place to go. Couple that with this horizontal level that was a support line that has broken down. I love retracements. I love pullbacks and, and trying, a, trying to trade from the pullback back down in the direction that I think the trend is going. I think this trend is still down. So I'm going for the Aussie dollar short. Fantastic. Aussie dollar short. Let's go to Simon. Simon, what are you having a look at? I uh, I love that trade, by the way, Ash. I am, um, just quickly, I'm going to go US Swiss short. Let me move you guys over here. Um, just, just a quick look at the dollar. We've been looking at this for four weeks, top of this channel. I've been a uh, long Aussie, Aussie dollar for the last two weeks. Um, but we're still we're still at the top. We're four weeks trying to roll over here. So I'm, I definitely want to be short the dollar. If I come down here to US Swiss, put that on my on my screen, and I can see this level down here all the way back to 2011. It's 0.88. It's also the 618 retracement from the top to the bottom of this move. I've got this diagonal trend line we've just bounced off and a potential head and shoulders forming. Obviously that's not formed yet. If this, I'm expecting this to come down here, form the right shoulder um, and away we go. If I look on the, on the seasonals, I can see this beautiful correlation into the end of, end of Feb, into March, into the first week of March. That, that's, that nails it for me. So on, on all of those points, I am short. US Swiss. Just to be clear, Simon, for those watching, we just saw a seasonal chart on the Swissy, which was going down. So your dollar Swiss short, which means you're short the dollar long the Swissy. Correct. Got it. Love it. Okay. Before we go to Adam for his trade, and well done, Adam, on your winner from last week, the DAX board, and there's about $520 on a, a couple of thousand dollar account, a $3,000 account. It is a good return there. Um, before we do that, we're going to ask those in the Zoom room if they want to win some money. All you have to do is put your name in the chat. If you put your name in the chat, Kim will grab your name out, put you on a wheel of uh, names. Now is the time, Alan. That is exactly right. Now is the time, Raj. You as well. Jonah, yep, that's you as well. Uh, welcome along. Your chance to make $750 or to steal one of our trades and take $375. Welcome in, Crystal. Nice to see you back. Always good to see you on our shows. Adam. Let's, um, hey Merlin, welcome along. Adam, what are you going to do this week? I think the world is watching. What are we all trading this week when we, we, we take your trade? So very, very quickly, I do want to just review the silver setup that I had also looked at last week. And it's, you know, the thing is, it's always important to review them. I still stand by the fact that I expect it to be bullish. And I prefer that over gold. Gold has subsequently kind of managed to do particularly well this last week of a nice bullish engulf in candle. So I just want to talk about how silver looked to me to be more appealing and actually failed. And gold did manage to follow through and I didn't think it was quite right yet. And then this week, what I have done very quickly is have kind of narrowed this down to a couple. I want to show you guys how my thinking was. Dollar cap, for example, is very choppy and messy, but it's definitely more bullish than bearish. My hesitation, though, is that this area seems to be a little bit of a, a problem area. So I'm going to pass on that for today. The Euro Swiss one, I like the fact that it's continuing to trend higher. But here's what happens when you go down to the full hour, this area looks very different. It looks as though it's battling. And actually, one of the things Ash highlighted really uh, nicely as well is with that Aussie dollar, you can see that continued failure in those areas, which usually then followed by a bearish breakout candle to the downside would be the conclusion that it's failed and it's going to head the other way. So kind of going down to my third option, which was gold, which we've spoken about, and then finishing with NASDAQ. So going to the tech 100 ones. Um, so I wanted to demonstrate why we often have a couple of different choices. But the tech, uh, the tech one, what I like about this one, especially on the daily, we've had a little bit of a, a sort of a bull flag, sort of low highs, lower lows, which as soon as you see a downtrend on the daily, it's a retracement on the weekly. If we look at it on the weekly, you can see we've had a really nice kind of a pullback here and then a nice little pullback here where the best kind of outcome would have been a, a really nice bullish close, either the, a, tight, a small wick or a closing up above the highs here. So it's not the strongest finish 
I've ever seen. When I look at it from the daily, the only concern I have is this little rejection candle here. However, I'm leaning. I'm still more bullish here than I am bearish. And so I'm going to go long on this one. I'm going to see if it ignores this failure here um, because it's broken through this uh, bull flag. And so the momentum should be. There's more evidence waiting to the upside than to the downside. So despite the fact that there is a rejection here and this therefore could lead to a failure. So there's always red flags and green flags. I'm going to go long on this and see if it manages to succeed in the next week in closing to the upside. Come on, Chen, you've got to write your name in there. You can't write I'm in, Chen. You've already won it once. You've got, you've got to write follow the rules. Thanks for that, Adam. You are <laughs> long uh, NASDAQ US 100. And we are, just remember everybody, if we're trading Forex, we're trading at 0.1. If we're trading at indices, we're trading at 1.00. Commodities at 0.1. Look, let's do some education with Ashley. We're going to come back and uh, see who's going to be the person who gets a chance to place a trade today. So it's education with Ash. Then we'll go to Kim, do the Wheel of Names, and invite the participant on to place a trade. Over to you, Ash. Thank you very much, mate. So this week we are talking about the three-point trend, uh, three-point channel, sorry. So I can illustrate it uh, uh, pretty nicely, actually, on the uh, on the Aussie here. So if we look at this Aussie, what, what, what I'm looking for, let me just put, pull this back a little bit here. Uh, that's what I want there. Oh, no. That's what I want there. So um, what I'm looking for is the um is to is to um figure out really where the aussie is going to ch where, where the aussie sort of like starts to reverse again so if we start to look at uh, a channel now let me see if i can find the channel i was after i think it was this one here is that right yes it is so this is that this is our channel line here so if i point a three-point channel there's one point there and then i've got another point there and then when i come down here i see that there's another point there now, what, I, what I'm after, if I, put, if I put it there, then you can see the, the, the lower end of that, of that channel sort of like, you know, coming in is probably sort of like slightly further back here. There we go. So there's our channel. Now, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I want to do is when I see this break out, I'm trying to uh, ascertain where it could come back to. And all I do is I extend the channel outwards. So as long as I've got my three points, the one, two, three, and then I see my breakthrough, then I can extend the channel line um, out and I can see a, a potential point that the, uh, that the next pullback will hold at, well, so I call it a pullback. The next downtrend will then hold at and bounce from. So it, it's the three point trend and it's, uh, sorry, the three point channel and you're really looking at this top line. And then when you see the breakthrough, you're looking to extend that channel line out to see if you can fi uh, figure out and, and get some sort of feel of where the trend may well come back to before it then starts to find some support and then turn around again. So it's nice. a great uh, break and retest, isn't it? Uh, I like it a lot. Uh, yeah. Great to see some of these uh, some of these technical setups. Kim, are you with us? Can we get straight on to the Wheel of Names, please? Let's see. Uh, let's get you on camera. Let's uh, get to the Wheel of Names and see which member of our guests uh, is going to be the chance. Welcome in, Kim. Nice to see you. Let's see which member of our guest is going to be the one that gets the chance to go uh, and place their trade today. It's going to be a good day. You could steal, uh, you could steal Ash's trade. You could steal Adam's trade. We've got a few names in there. Let's spin it, Kim. No Sam in there this week, eh? There we go. We've got Roseanne Agawan. She is uh, one of the uh, WISHIP competitors from the Philippines. Welcome along, Rose. Good to have you with us. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure Rose is one of the WISH uh, competitors. The charity from the uh, Philippines works with us. I'm going to ask Rose in a few minutes to uh, uh, this. That is a child. <laughs> yeah, and that's okay. Um, we can't make a child can't place a trade, but they can tell us. I'm sure there's a parent behind them. We will have a look and see what's going on with that in a minute. Can we get Rose uh, onto the? On to the uh, camera in a few minutes. We're going to do uh, education with Simon, and we'll check on that. Um, can you ask some questions in the background, please, Sam? Uh, okay, let's do Simon, then we'll have a, a meet. We'll meet Rose. Simon, to you. Yes, guys, I'm, I'm going to probably split this in half because it it's, might take too long. So I think what we'll do this week, we're talking about Coinbase. This is a, a stock on the NASDAQ. It's, the ticker sign is Coin. Um, and I want to show you a few of the trades that or three trades, two that I didn't take, one that I did. The two that I didn't take um, are, are earlier on in the year. These three white arrows you see here, June, October. Uh, the other one is January 2023. The, these are all the start of Bitcoin moves. So they're marked on my Coinbase chart so that I know 
that that when Bitcoin goes, Coinbase is going to follow. And my and my entry model for buying these shares, I, I just use a fib, a standard fib, and I plot I plot my box. So without without me using the fib because I want to keep the time down, um, we put a fib in the bottom here, up drag it up to the top. There's my six one eight to seven one eight six, sorry seven eight six box. It's my buy zone. Um, so for me, my my orders would be fifty percent of my allocation would be the the six one eight, twenty five percent in the middle. 25% at the bottom. There's a reason I do that, but I'm going to go, I'm going to do that next week. Just want to show you, didn't take this trade for me, um, March 23, the sentiment wasn't there. There was no, no, no Bitcoin bullishness. So I wouldn't have taken that trade. The second one, same thing. Take the fib to the top, pull it down to the bottom, 618, there's my box. Didn't take this trade either. Um, same, same, same reason that the Bitcoin move started here in October. That was the, that's when the, the real Bitcoin move happened. So I wasn't I wasn't in these two. I was in the third one. Now, if we take the fib on this on this move up here from here all the way to the top, pull it all the way back down. Here's my box. That's my that's my uh, my 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 buy zone. If you like, let me blow this up quickly because I want to show you what happened. Um, this was my level. I I wanted to buy this level, but I I, I did get a little bit a bit um uh, what's the word. Um, I wanted to get ahead of it. So I got down to this candle here and thought, oh, I loved loved the shape of this candle. Thought, am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to buy that? And I thought, no, do you know what? Wait, be patient. Wait for at least a, a test of this 100-day moving average or your, or your 618. So I waited, I waited, I waited. And when I saw this pop out the top and I saw these lows get swept, I, that was me. I was in. And I actually bought this bar here. I bought the top of this bar as it closed above the 100. Yes, we got swept the next day. I want to talk about the sweeps next week because they're, they're really worth looking at. But that was a great trade, one of the three. So it's, it's just about a, a 618.786 buy zone, which I use a lot with certain. I don't I don't use it much in, in FX, but I use it a lot in crypto and a lot with stocks. Is um, that, is that because week, of the volatility, Si? Because, because yeah. those do tend to swing a, a lot lower than, uh, than you would Correct. find with FX. Yeah, I love it. Correct. And I'll show you something else next week, which is even better. It's really good. But we haven't got time today, so I'll save it for next week. While we're talking Thanks. about the big cryptos, uh, Simon, you might have noticed that Wish had a buy come in uh, this week and put the price over six cents. Saw that. Brilliant. Always nice to see. Always nice to see. Good good, uh, good crypto charity, that one. Rightio, let's uh, get Rose on camera, please. Rose, where are you? Can we get you on camera unmuted? If you're a child, I'm going to need to see an adult. We're going to give you about 10 seconds to find that for me, Rose, on camera, please. Hey, there Rose, you how go. are you? Evening, Paul. Rose, you don't look like a child. Uh, I choose to steal, Paul. Because okay. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> okay. Welcome along. So, Rose, um, you're going to steal a trade? Yes, Paul. Which, which, which trade would you like to steal? I choose to steal <laughs> Sir Simon. Oh, so no. Simon's trade, <laughs> yeah. So you are you are dollar dollar Swiss dollar Swiss short. You're dollar Swiss short. You're dollar Swiss yeah. short. Dollar Swiss, long, dollar Swiss short, right, Simon? So yeah. it's okay, Simon, because Adam gave us a list of extra ones a few minutes ago. I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> got, uh, just... got, we, got, we had we had gold. We had uh, we had, we had we had gold. What else do you have, Adam, on your list? We had uh, dollar CAD and euro Swissy long. They were all long. Dollar CAD long, dollar euro Swissy long. Rose, you understand how it works? If dollar Swiss is the winner next Monday, you'll get half of the jackpot. That's yeah. three hundred and seventy-five dollars. Miss Sam, if you want, she will give you the details so you can log into the account and watch the trades. Uh, if you want to, as you go along, Miss Sam will reach out and do that for you. Uh, thank you very much. I've got to ask, uh, Rose, was it easy? Yeah, it's easy, sir, but I'm nervous. <laughs> You're doing great, Rose. Honestly, um, honestly, Rose, there's only the five of us here. There's no one else watching anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no need to be nervous. You've done a fantastic job. You'll never find an easier way to make some money. And one thing we really love, uh, Rose, when our money goes into the Philippines, people spend it on really cool things. So good luck. You hope it goes well. Uh, we will see you next yeah. Monday to see if you're the winner. Remember, Rose, you've got to come back on the show next week if you're the winner. You've got to be on the show to win. If you're not on the show and you win, I jack for it anyway. So make sure you turn up next Monday. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Well done, Rose. Thanks, Rose. Well done, Rose. Good luck. Rightio, we're going to go to um 
uh, we're going to go to sports bets. Uh, look, I um, I think that uh, I'm still uh, I'm still cruising along with sports bet. Simon, do you want to go um, last on the sports bet so you can have a chance to dig in? And uh, we're going to go first. No, I want to go first because I'm going to I'm going to take Adam's Euro Swiss long. <laughs> you're going to take Euro Swiss long. Let me just uh, put that on the account. Euro Swiss yeah. long while you're doing your sports bet. Then we'll do uh, Asha sports bet. Euro Swiss long. Okay, Euro Swiss long sports bet last week. Um, I mean, a bit of sweet for me. City won, obviously. Liverpool won at home. Southampton, who are Leeds' biggest rivals in the Championship. I mean, how did, how they didn't? Uh, I was to say how they didn't beat Hull. Hull are going not going too bad, but anyway, they lost, ruined my bet, but made my day at the same time. Great when you <laughs> bet on something and you know that if, if it goes wrong, you're still going to be happy. So <laughs> that was great. This week, I've I've I'm, I've got to do it. I watched the Chelsea Liverpool game yesterday. I watched those those young Liverpool kids, and I watched Chelsea absolutely bottle it in the extra time, and thought, "Oh my God, you had the, what an opportunity to, to 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 get a trophy for for Poch, and they and they and they ruined it. They just bottled it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take it that in two days' time, they're still gonna be ruined from that. It's one or the other. They're either gonna be smarting or ruined. But I'm gonna go ruined. Leeds are nine on the bounce. I just fancy us. So I've got Leeds to win away nine to two hundred pound post five fifty. Please. Oh, 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 that's what we like. That's what we like. A hundred pounds face five fifty. Simon's putting a round on in Bali as well. If that comes in, we do. Uh, we do <laughs> like it. With all sports bet guys, please. If you're following us, you're welcome to. We'll let you know how we're going. But do obviously bet within your financial limits, just like the trades. If you see a trade, Adam had a great trade last week. That doesn't mean sell your house and put it on Adam. I mean, take a little uh, a little trade in that direction. You know, this is a sensible trading show. We are we are not an Instagram trading show. We're the real deal, real traders. Ash, what's your sports bet? My sports bet this week is also uh, is the same uh, same game, which are uh, you know uh, I uh, I'm a bit gutted. I'm going against Side because he's got a, uh, a a far superior record to me. But I'm going to go for Chelsea to bounce back after that uh, that 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 disappointment in the Carabao Cup. I thought they played okay, and I think it's going to be about whether they can pick themselves up. Uh, and also, Leeds are fighting for something. Chelsea aren't going to do anything. They've got to fight for this cup. Leeds are fighting for something else. What kind of team do they put out? So I think that's a bit of a question for Leeds. Um, but I also think that Chelsea are going to be a bit fragile. So I've actually gone for the draw. You know, I can't really split them when I when I look at it that way. So I'm going for the draw. Draw play seven to two. Um, which is uh, obviously going to be a good return. It will recover some of my losses as well. Yeah, in fact, all my losses uh, and a bit more. So <laughs> Chelsea versus Leeds. The game is on. I'm going for the draw. If you uh, if you want to go with form, go with Simon. <laughs> and he's going to pay better as well. But uh, but that's that's what I'm selling on this week, mate. Chelsea, Chelsea Leeds draw. Cheers. Look, uh, my sports bet, uh, I'm going to go... Um... I'm going to go uh, back to the cricket. I'm four in a row, uh, four winners in a row now. I think that's open up in the. I think that's, that's the right place. Look, um, I, I, look, I've made uh, the majority of my money by betting against teams that I want to have win, and uh, I'm going to continue that uh, trend. I am going to back Australia in the cricket test against New Zealand at a dollar fifty-five to one. Uh, I will uh, click there. I'll put my standard fifty bucks on that, and I'll place that bet. Now, one of the things I'll say when I do this is that. If I was placing this bet um, outside of this show, I'd be keeping an eye on this one here. Just that uh, the test starts on Thursday and there's rain in Wellington due Monday, Tuesday. So um, can Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, for day four and day five, there's rain due. The question is, can Australia knock us over in three days before the rain gets there? It's the Basin Reserve in New Zealand, if you're a cricket lover, you'll know this, that um, in the first day, it'll do what's called seaming. It'll bounce sideways. Batting will be quite hard. The team that bats first will be uh, doing very well to score more than sort of 200, 250. Then it'll be very, very flat on the second and the third day. And the team that bats on the second and third day will likely score 400. And uh, then it's a matter of what happens. If the bit of rain comes in, we might sneak away with a draw. Um, if uh, if Australia's got a 200 run lead on the first innings because they put us in, then uh, they'll knock us over in less than two days and win that test match. My understanding is Williamson back. I'm not sure even Mitchell's back. I think we're still at least one good player short. So I will take Australia to beat us in the cricket test match. Um, as we've spoken about a few times in our show, part of the entertainment of the show is that we take trades and we share them with you. We have no targets. We have no stop losses. 
It is just fun. We love it. It's interesting to see if we can pick direction and how well we can pick direction. What I would encourage you to do always with these trades is to have a stop loss under the first level of support. So if it starts to go wrong, you can get out. Uh, we've had a really good start to the quarter. You know, we've stayed around break even in markets that weren't great. Adam's put away a little, I think actually about a 14% winner on, on the last one. So that's uh, that's really nice. It means we'll have a really nice uh, first quarter of the year. Uh, stay with us. Keep doing what you're doing. Follow our trades. Jump in the Zoom and see if mate, um, six people have left the, have left the Zoom. <laughs> I'm not sure the sports bets are as exciting to them as it is for them to watch uh, to have a chance to win the money. <laughs> we'll be back next week. We hope that uh, Rose wins. If Rose wins, she'll get uh, three hundred twenty-five dollars. If she doesn't, you guys will be running for one thousand dollars next week on Monday. Simon will be away. I'll be in for him. We'll see you then. Um, take care. Look after your capital. Trade carefully. See you all. Cheers, guys. Bye, guys. That's a wrap for this episode of the Learn to Trade Online Show. Keep your charts up and your trade savvy. For more insights, subscribe and catch us next time. See you in the next episode. Stay calm and make good decisions. The Learn to Trade online show is presented for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information presented should not be construed as investment advice. Always consult a licensed professional before making investment decisions. The views and opinions expressed on the Learn to Trade online show are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of the show's hosts, guests and sponsors. The Learn to Trade online show is producers, sponsors and the host Paul Bottrell, Simon Williams and Ash Bull shall not be liable for losses resulting from investment decisions based on informational viewpoints presented on the Learn to Trade online show.